now recording. Take a roll call so everybody can hear who is present to establish a quorum. Uh, Cheryl Graf Tomolo. I'm here. Frank McKee. Here. Raymond Akabuchi. Here. Elaine Paul Schaefer. Randy Bates. I'm here. I'm here. here. Sorry. Oh, Elaine's here too. Good. Randy? I didn't hear. Yeah, I'm here. Randy. Randy. Uh, Wayne McGill. I am here. Steve Linville. I heard it. I'm here. Yep. Stephen Beckley. Here. Hi, Steve. And Donna Sylvester. Donna, yay. They have a full forum. Everyone. It must be spring. <laughs> so we now turn it back over to you, Cheryl. Thank you very much. Okay. Now I can officially call it to order since everybody's been accounted for. Um, next, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I hope everybody's read them. Um, motion to approve. All right, thanks, Mandy. A second. This is and right. Ray, the dynamic duo. Okay. Yes, we are in R, right. Alrighty. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. Aye. Um, next up are audience comments. I don't believe we have any, but any audience comments, Ed? That was correct, Cheryl. There's no um, written comments in. They were posted. The agenda was posted on our website, and the, uh, the my email was listed, and no co public comments were received. Alrighty. Thanks, Ed. All right, the PACD monthly report, which is in here somewhere. Whoops. Um, did you send this out, Ed? Excuse me? Did you see it, send the PACD monthly report out? I thought I did. I didn't get it. I don't know why. I will check. Uh, I will follow up with uh, PACD. Um, report and also Linda's report came in a little late so I'll forward that out to everyone as well. Okay. Is Linda here too? All right. Oh there. Yeah. Already anything striking in the PACD monthly report that I have not read? No, um other than a thing on the agenda they will have today about the dues that we'll talk about later. Okay. All righty. So I guess we can just move on from there. Okay, next I'll entertain a motion to file all bank statements for audit. So who would like to make this make motion? motion? Second. So this was Ray and then Randy, right? Alrighty, are there any questions or comments about this uh, entry? Alrighty. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Alrighty. A emergency uh, motion to approve for deposit the following emergency review fees. There were no emergency review fees in March. Is that right, Ed? That's correct. How about that? We need to make some more money here. Okay, next up. Motion request to purchase furniture to complete development of new workstation and add storage to small multi-purpose area. 725 from the Clean Water Fund. I guess this is to accommodate ARI somehow, right? Well, yeah, let me tell you what we had to do. I did contact building and maintenance about surplus furniture and they didn't have anything they said uh, to fit our need. He did give me the name of George Wood, who is with uh, Office Connections, uh, who is the uh, co-star uh, supplier. So I contacted him and he came out and did the measurements that we needed. Uh, we're, what I'm trying to accomplish is Ari is going to be, and we should introduce him first, but oh, yeah. Ari is going to be um, at Michelle's workstation currently, and Michelle is going to move into this new office we're creating. And what we had there wasn't sufficient for the current operation. So we needed another uh, table to fit the exact design and a hutch to put uh, some more storage in. 
and then move some of the stuff out <laughs> that was now serving as our lunchroom. We wanted to get a cabinet uh, to install above the sink to have some extra storage space. So he gave us prices for those uh, three units plus the installation of $752.50. All right. Seems rather reasonable. All righty. Well, I, um, no one made the motion yet, right? No. no. I'll move we approve the expense. Oh, uh, thank you, Elaine. Second. I'll second. I'll second. Thank. Okay, we'll let Frank do it. All righty, all in favor? Aye. 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 Now we're going to take a pause here and introduce why we're mo moving all the furniture around. And that is because our new technician is here. And that is Ari Melillo. Is that right? Yep, yep, you said it right. Perfect. Okay, yay team. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, Mallory. We Thank you. Be, uh, we will be getting to know you better once we can all be in person, whatever. But it's nice to see you now. Yep. Is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, well, I really appreciate the warm welcome. Um, I'm from the Lehigh Valley uh, and I went to Kutztown University, if anybody's wondering where my education's from. Um, and I'm just looking forward to doing a great job. Well, we hope you do, and it's really nice that you're here. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> All righty. Next up, another motion. Payment of the 2020-2021 PACD annual dues. Oh, there's a paragraph behind it. They changed policy this year and changed the deadline from June 30th to March 31st. The payment of dues was approved in our annual work plan but past practice has always been to verify this payment as a motion request. So, motion to pay dues? Yes. Thank you. Second? Aye. I'll second it. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Now there was a uh, check to be signed, which um, I already signed. So there you go. <laughs> well, let's make sure we can rip it up if they don't agree. But it's basically right. uh, an act payment, the agricultural conservation technician uh, agreement that we have from Chester County. It is their quarterly uh, payment that they requested $1,600 and it's been reimbursed by the state. So now we can pay Chester County. Okay, so I, I will entertain a motion to approve this check signing. I uh, so move. Oh, thank okay. you. Okay. And Randy, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good, so that I don't have to tear it up. <laughs> Next up is old business. Uh, office improvement status and hiring of a third conservation technician. Well, it kind of skittled that, haven't I? But here we go. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Ed. Okay, what we haven't talked about, uh, we mentioned that Ari's brought on board. We mentioned the... Uh, uh, the office improvements. Um, the things that we're waiting on is the telephone. We still have this problem with Ring Central. Uh, telecommunication was out and uh, installed Ring Central phones uh, at all our workstations. So we replaced the whole uh, arc, uh, the old ISDN system with this new Ring, Ring Central voice over internet. Um, however, it's not functioning yet because we have to get uh, computer IT people out here to connected to the network to make it function. Um, our workstation also has not uh, for um, Ari's workstation computer, which is going to be a laptop, a docking station, uh, has not been delivered yet either. But with, uh, and I've sent a couple of emails, so hopefully that'll be taken care of very shortly. He is now working, Michelle is working remotely, so he's working at uh, Michelle's computer right currently. Okay. So you patched together a network here in some way, right? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Well, that's good. So I'm not going to run into Michelle today, am I? No. All right, next up, a memorandum of understanding between the district and county council. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I keep interrupting you. I apologize. That's all right. um, the issue of uh, the MOU, I had a, a meeting with Francine about this. Um, the uh, agreed upon 
practice of she's going to try to have it reviewed by the solicitor. And once the solicitor makes a ruling on it, if they want to proceed, then she hopes that she can sit down with uh, Elaine to work out any details that county council may have, and then we can uh, see where we need to go. So it is going to the solicitor now. So, okay, so, so it is progress. Progress and it is in the works, right? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Now, um, next up, the Christmas tree resentment stream bag project in Glen Providence Park. And I must say the pictures were quite encouraging. Yeah. I'm glad uh, I'm glad you uh, looked at our Facebook post and saw our pictures. Um, that was uh, we received the Chapter 105 permit to do that work um, at Glen Providence Park. Uh, we installed ten. No, I'm sorry, twelve ten foot uh, Christmas trees. Um, they were anchored to the eroding stream bank at Glen Providence Park. Um, in the beginning of March um, by the Delaware County Parks and Recreation crew. And they made quick work of it. Um, and the trees are all tied together and anchored in at multiple points along the stream bank. So they're not gonna wash away during a big storm, fingers crossed. Um, we did have a big storm, I think shortly after they were installed, um, but they held their own and they're actually, they seem to be doing a good job. Um, so they're diverting the high velocity water away from the stream bank or cushioning um, the um, cushioning the, the water um, from hitting that stream bank too hard. Um, so it looks really good. And we hope that over the next year we can see some changes and hopefully um, protect that stream bank. Excellent. I think it's a great idea and I'm glad you're making use of them rather than chopping them up or whatever, right? Right. Good. Thank you. And if you haven't seen it, folks, it is very impressive. And I wonder whether they have still have their needles on them anymore. They did the last time I checked, but they were turning brown. <laughs> yeah, right. So they'll be off soon, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, this is good. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Delaware County's MS4 annual report for 2020. You submitted it. Is that right, folks? Uh, the MS4 report was due uh, in September. However, they didn't tell us it was due in September. So I was working with the regional office, they, uh, Beth Mahoney, and she uh, agreed that if we can get it done by March 15th, we uh, would be in compliance. Um, so we did that, and the report has been submitted electronically, and uh, we are now back into compliance with the MS4 program. And there is no word on the actual issuance of our permit. That's still on hold, but hopefully um, uh, we, we know that we have to do this type of report again next September at the same time. And uh, we sat down with the staff at our staff meeting to go over a number of issues that uh, we need to start working on with the stormwater, such as uh, updating our Chester Creek Trail for outfalls. Um, we have to do our outfall inspections. We have to learn who all the new facility managers are and uh, meet with them. And uh, so that'll, that'll be a task we have to complete between now and June 30th. And we hope to also do some um, webinar training for the staff when they have time on uh, illicit discharges. Alrighty, what do they? What do you do with the illicit discharges? Do you cite those people? Well, fortunately, we haven't had any on all of our outfalls. Uh, the closest we've come to a, a problem was at Fair Acres, where we had some detergent and some uh, fecal coliform numbers that weren't excessively high. Um, we, were, we were trying to trace about exactly where that detergent was coming from. We, we believe that it was from the loading dock where they were scrubbing, um, cleaning off uh, food trays, but it could be also a laundry in one of the other buildings. Um, we're hoping that we can get them to do a dye testing when it comes up again, when we find the problem so they can do uh, a dye test to find out exactly where it's coming from. But it's not excessive. All that um, water and uh, would go into the stormwater basin that they have with a pond with an aerator, so it would be uh, have some level of treatment before it would discharge to Rocky Run. Okay. Okay. Um, next up, thanks, Ed. Next up, our Facebook page. Fun. 
Yeah, um, so this was created, I think, on March 4th, um, our, the district's Facebook page. Um, and I believe Ed sent out the link to the page to all of you um, to check it out or give us a like. And um, it has grown in the past month and hopefully it'll continue to grow. Um, I provided a, a summary of statistics. I thought that would be interesting for you to all see. Um, we have uh, 68 likes as of the end of the month and 88 follows. And to be completely honest, I'm not entirely sure what the difference is, um, but either way, <laughs> those people who uh, liked or followed our page um, get to see what we post. Um, and our most popular post of the past month uh, was the Christmas tree project. Not Quite surprising. Rightfully right, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, if Randy, would you like to talk a little bit about what we discussed about the uh, advertising on how you know, somebody you work with? Oh, yeah. I, I'm using a company called Bad Rhino for uh, all, basically all of my advertising. Uh, they specialize in Facebook. Uh, Facebook ads, um, they're able to pinpoint specific targets uh, to uh, send ads to. Uh, so they would possibly be looking at, you know, gardeners or, uh, you know, people that are interested in conservation. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, they'll take your Facebook page, they'll optimize it. And um, they'll do uh, uh, ad buys. And they can do ad buys for as little as 25 bucks. And that might go out to you know a couple thousand people, um, so it's worked really well for us. We've just built up a tremendous uh, amount of likes, and follows. So uh, that's something you guys are interested in. I can definitely touch with them. I think it would be great to uh, raise our visibility. Huh. Yeah, definitely. Anybody else got an opinion on this? No one's answering. Am I, can you hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. I think it's a good idea. I was talking to Randy about uh, exploring it now and building up some of our contacts. So when we do have people come over, they'll have a lot to uh, more to look at. We have about five or six posts so far. So, you know, by the time we get to talking with the ad company and finding out what what potential we have uh, we should be building up that contact uh, content information. So when they do get to check us out they'll see something they like so i think it's a, i think it's a good idea i've never exp tried that so i'd be happy to uh, explore it with them i think it's a great idea this mm -hmm. is good. sounds good mm -hmm. i'll, awesome. get, on, get, I'll get all the information over to you excellent thanks it's also a nice way to reach out when we have when there are programs like the mini grants or or things like that Right. Try and kind of target people to, or even the poster contests, things like that. Right. To get a little more reach than the normal places that we touch ordinarily. Definitely. And definitely, we need outreach for uh, some, some of our programs. So this will be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Randy. Good idea. Well, I like how we yes, tag teamed on it uh, with Karen and. Uh, we got it up and we have some friends. So that's a, that's a good thing. <laughs> and uh, we, we've reached half our goal in one month as opposed to the six months. So uh, we're, we're way above average. So we're moving faster than I thought we could. So kudos to Karen for that. And can I just make a suggestion that all of us uh, board members take the next post, share it with all yeah. of our friends and invite our friends to like it. And that way we'll have exponential growth. <laughs> Thank you. That's a good idea. I have shared it, and uh, I didn't include the wording for it for them to uh, like it too. But we'll, I'll, I'll continue. I'll do it again. Cheryl, Cheryl, you're in your room by yourself. I don't know if you're comfortable with taking your mask off. So. It... Oh yeah, right. Oh my. <laughs> Either I have it on too often or not often enough. I walked in somewhere <laughs> the other day where I always have it on, and I it was just I was oblivious. No, whatever you're comfortable with. So, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, this is me. Anyway, so this is a great idea. I'm excited about kind of uh, bringing us uh, into the uh, more uh, visible world at any rate. This is great. Excellent. <laughs>
So old business is done. We will now move on to new business. And there's a video, Delco CD's role in sustainability. All righty. So do fill us in, Ed. Okay, this came about because uh, early on, the Sustainability Commission was asking for every department to start working on a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation of 10 minutes or so to give to the group to learn a little bit about what the county was doing. Uh, at the last meeting of the Sustainability Commission, it became apparent that we have more ideas for presentation than we have time. So I took that work and uh, that I was working on the presentation and found a way to record audio and then convert it to a, a, a video. And now I have that video up on our YouTube channel and uh, I've shared it with Francine uh, Locke, uh, our chief sustainability officer. And uh, I'd like to go ahead and, and post it on Facebook as well. So, but I wanted to let the board have a chance to look at it first. Excellent. I did look at it and I thought it was really informative. I was quite taken by it. So I'm really glad that you did this. This is another letting people know what we're all about thing, which is wonderful. Any other comments? I'm babbling away to myself. Okay. Well, I think this is a really good thing and thanks for doing it. And the, uh, the, the whole thing is, is nicely, uh, there's nice pictures, there's nice illustration there's it's very clear so thanks a lot for doing this Ed. thank you mm -hmm. okay next up uh, double checking a reimbursement to the county of twenty four thousand five hundred and sixteen dollars one in 2020 and one one in 2021 could be a coincidence with checking yes yeah. yeah. um so i've i've had a discussion with karen books uh who, who handles that uh, these reimbursements and um, she looked it up for me and she is uh, conflicted as well. So she's not quite sure what the grant center actually did and she's gonna do some research for us. Uh, it looks like they double uh, reimbursed us for something, but she's not clear on that either. And the wrong notes were put on the check. So the notes that I have on my records are exactly what's on Karen's records but it, it doesn't work out right. And they're giving us, uh, with this, I have another reimbursement here that I stopped making when I started looking at the numbers and it was going to be that we were over the uh, 64,000 we usually get for the Coast uh, Conservation District Fund Allocation Program. So I thought there was a problem <laughs> and now we're looking into it right now. So um, they may have double um, and reimbursed us from the state. So it wasn't my mistake from a change. So right. I, I feel happy about that. I, I did catch it and uh, hopefully we'll have that uh, corrected before too long. Or we could keep it joking. <laughs> okay, thanks Ed. You'll let us know what the upshot of this is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, next up is the mini grant. Karen? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we only received one mini grant application um, this spring from DCBA. Uh, they're requesting $500 uh, for the expansion of their citizen science stream monitoring program. Um, they partnered with uh, Willistown Conservation Trust and the Stroud Water Research Center to carry out stream monitoring throughout um, the entire Darby Cobbs Creek watersheds. Um, so they're requesting mini grant funding to purchase additional supplies. Um, and they're requesting this supplies um, because of social distancing requirements and um, helping their volunteers keep their distance while um, each of them having their own equipment to uh, carry out the monitoring activities. Um, so that's, that's the only application we received this round. Uh, so we, I guess we, we would need a motion to Motions. approve that. Right. It is strange that we've only received one. If it is. We would have time to look over this stuff and move things along, but apparently not. Um, yeah, we did. We had some people asking about clarification about the mini grant program, but um, I don't know if the deadline slipped their minds or if they decided not to apply, but yeah, only one this round. Okay. Well, I will entertain a motion to award this mini grant. 
So, so moved. Okay. Okay. And who's the new move? I'm sorry. Second move. I don't care. All right. <laughs> All right, Frank. That'll work. <laughs> is this Frank and Ray? Is that who it is? Yeah. All right. Well, this is good. Frank That's with the funny. honor. Yeah, that's right. Um, it would be maybe this is another thing that we can push forward with our new visibility initiative. Yeah, absolutely. Right, right. Okay. Uh, next up, the Keystone ten million dollar tree partnership program. Excellent. So I don't know um, if any of the board have heard about this program. <clears throat> It is a statewide um, tree program uh, that's managed by the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. Um, so initially when I heard about the program, I heard Chesapeake Bay and I instantly thought we weren't eligible to be a partner. Um, but that's not the case. Um, rather than not being a partner, it is a statewide program. Um, the only thing is that any partners outside of the Chesapeake Bay watershed uh, would rank lower in receiving trees. Um, so they're not a top priority in receiving available trees. Um, but um, partners are able to request these trees at no cost and distribute to their groups um, for planting projects on public or private property. And it does not have to be um, uh, focused on riparian buffer areas. It can be any kind of street tree project um, or upland planting. Um, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation asks that partners outside of the Chesapeake Bay watershed um, involve their legislators and elected officials, as well as volunteers for planting projects um, to increase that awareness of their tree planting initiative. Um, so, like I mentioned, since we're out of the Chesapeake Bay watershed, uh, we would not rank as high as those counties uh, within the Chesapeake Bay watershed. However, um, since we are a suburban um, county outside of Philadelphia, um, an urbanized county, um, they uh, we do rank a little higher than some of those other counties that um, are more rural outside of the Chesapeake Bay watershed. So I wanted to bring this up to the board. Um, to see what you all think about the district becoming a partner um, for this program. The way it would work is that I think every spring and fall, we can request a certain number of trees. Um, I believe they're bare root trees. I'm not sure about the sizes, um, but they would be delivered to the district office. And then whether we're having a planting project or if one of our watershed associations is requesting those trees um, through us, uh, we would distribute to them and figure out the details from there. Um, and I do know that the Chesapeake Bay Foundation would require that we track the trees through a GIS tracking system. Um, so I figured I would bring it up to everyone to see uh, what you think about us becoming a partner. Well, is it free? To us? It is, yeah. Yeah. Well, free trees, count me in. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Personally, I mean, I, I think it would be great. Now, where would you think we might be able to deploy these great gifts? I I don't know. Um, it would be an ongoing partnership, and I don't know if if they like would require us to request trees every spring and fall in order to stay in the program. Um, the way I, I spoke with the, um, the manager of the program from the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, she mentioned that the conservation district can kind of be the, the point organization of the county. So for example, if DCBA wants to do a tree planting, um, that's not, that wouldn't be um, applicable through Tree Vitalize, um, they could come to us and request those trees and we can submit that request to um, Chesapeake Bay Foundation. Um, so if, we, if we did a little bit of homework and contacted our usual uh, folks like uh, uh, DCA uh, mm -hmm. and, and we got some feedback saying, sure, of course, they would you know, love to have trees and you know, love to see us do this. I, I, Think it would be a great thing. I don't. I don't see any downside. Do you? 
No. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, cool. I think that was that was what I was thinking. I would like to do a little more research. Uh, it sounds, I don't want to say it sounds too good to be true, but it does sound like a great program. Um, but I would like to gauge interest uh, from our watershed groups and also talk yep. to uh, the other watershed specialists in Southeast Pennsylvania, because I do believe that they are partners through this program and just get their feedback as well. That's great. You could find out what their experience has been. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I have a little personal experience with um, these programs and just a couple of things I want to share. Um, working with a partner that will organize the volunteer planting effort is the way to go because it's actually a lot of work to get these trees in, to fend, you can't just, get, you can't just plant them and leave them. Um, mm -hmm. They have to be fenced for deer. They have to be watered if it's if it's um, if it's dry. Um, but a lot of the or the conservation organizations with whom we already partner might be interested in having the tree supply, but providing the volunteer work. Um, in my township, we've done with our conservancy, we've done a couple resident pick up tree. You know, pick up your tree, free tree, but you've got to pick it up and plant it yourself. Those are not as successful, it, especially if they're free. We learned that if you charge even $10, people actually show up to get the tree. <laughs> you give it for free, they don't show up. Mm -hmm. um, most successful programs have been the programs where we fund someone coming to plant it on your property and putting a gator on it and setting it up to, to succeed. And those trees succeed but that costs money because someone has to plant it. So um, the planting is, is, is more work than you think. <laughs> and, and keep, keep right. I'm, and feeding. Mm -hmm. And protecting it, yeah. I'm thinking if, if this is something that we wanna pursue, I, I think it would be good for the district to come up with pro, our own local program guidelines. Um, so that way there's um, accountability on our part to make sure that these trees are planted properly and taken care of and protected and maintained through the future. Um, I think that that would be what I would like to do <laughs> if we were to be a partner here. And Karen, are they hardwood trees? What are they? Um, they're, I, I don't know. I believe they're hardwood trees. Um, they're all native, of course, to our area. Um, that is, as far as the species go, I'm not sure. Okay. Thanks. The, the only one request, Karen, if you just touch a little bit about colonial plantation that had a request to you. Oh, yeah. Um, colonial plantation um, at Ridley Creek State Park. Uh, they were reaching out about planting trees on their property. Um, they had taken down I don't know how many, but numerous tree of heaven trees. Um, and they kept the stumps and the roots to keep uh, the soil from eroding. And they, they removed so many other invasive plants. So they basically have a cleared hillside um, on their property now. And they reached out about doing a planting there. Um, I think it could be an eligible project through Tree Vitalize. Um, and I also connected them with CRC Watersheds. Um, because I know that CRC uh, has funding through, oh, I want to say through DCNR um, to do plantings on public property. Um, so we have a site visit coming up to check that out and get that conversation started. Um, but I think we've had numerous requests of people wanting to plant trees in areas that are not riparian buffers or not along a stream and wouldn't be eligible through Tree Vitalize. Um, and I think this this program would be a good um, uh, filler for those kinds of projects. Is there a way that we could start small and um, build up with it? I, th I think that would be the way to do it rather than thinking, oh boy, free trees, let's get a lot of them and then yeah. afterward. I think that might be a good idea. Yeah, that was okay. a sense, what Elaine had said about the concern is that my concern the trees aren't the most expensive part of this whole thing right and exactly we, we we don't like the tubes when we do our planting we like to have the cages so the cages and stakes are it, it adds up quick and then if you're talking about bare root seedling we know here uh 
at Rose Street Park when uh, our watershed specialist has been working with Rick Ray about the gators and the watering was uh, something you have to keep up or those bare root seedlings just don't stand a chance. Right. And I'm thinking, um, if I remember correctly, I believe that they do provide tree protection, like the, the gates in the state or the caging in the state. Um, but I would have to triple check that. Gotcha. Excellent. This is a great idea. We'll have to uh, take it slow, I think, but I think it's wonderful. And you'll find out some of these uh, questions we have. Mm -hmm. Yep. And let us know next month, right? Yes. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, sure. Thanks a lot. Okay, next up is the report from the cooperating agencies. Is Beth still here? I see her. Yeah, I'm still here. There you are. I can't see you, but I can see that little block. Okay. Um, yeah, so I don't have a lot of progress to report. I will say that um, our office is open. Um, we don't take visitors, but we can come out and do field visits for anybody that needs um, any technical assistance. And we also have financial assistance available. So um, we're still here and, you know, let me know if you need anything from us. Excellent. Well, I'm glad to see you're up and running more, uh, more vigorously. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, thanks, Beth. Sure. Uh, okay, next up, Linda. Linda hi, Matthew. everybody. Oh, there yep. you are. Hi. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm sorry I just didn't get my report out in time for you to get it in your mailings. Um, so just to let you know about that, usually the the um, report that I get from central office is very lengthy. Um, for example, this this month it was five pages long, and um, if I can expect um, directors with the, all the other information that you get to um, be willing to take two pages, um, that that's you know that's expecting enough of you. So I really try to um, pare it down, which takes an enormous amount of editing to make sure that you still get all the pertinent information. So if I don't get it late until late, um, sometimes that. Um, we'll get it to you too late. Um, but um, since it's such a condensed version, a lot of times there may be information that um, you want more of. And I have, you know, I, always on my reports, I can give some background information if I have pared it down more than you want. <laughs> um, but the one thing that I wanted to, um, to highlight on the report that, um, that was for this month. Um, hold on, I'm trying to pull it up. Um, well, it was about having um, board meetings virtually. And I know that this has been part of the discussion the last couple of months that the commission, State Conservation Commission would hope that even if you go back in person, that you still have some virtual ability participation. And on my report, I just have a couple of things that are um, important to keep in mind if you do do that. And, you know, you can reference it yourselves, but um, the, a couple of the things is to just make sure that you're still conforming with the Sunshine Act requirements in um, in in posting it so that in a way that or if somebody from the public contacts the office that they have a way to join that they know how to join. Um, and then there are a couple of other recommendations that I hear you already doing, but if there's anybody that's joining even after you have a, a live meeting, so motions are being made live, people that are joining from the public, they may not know who, so still to identify yourselves or, um, you know, when you make motions. And, and, and then if somebody from the public does join virtually when you're or now or when you go back to um, live and then still allow the public in, they should, before they make comment, they should identify themselves as well. So, you know, you, you, you don't just have some anonymous person saying things. You really should ask that they identify themselves. Um, and there are a couple of other notes there, but um, 
that that's I'm not sure d depending on where you are in the state or or you know what the district directors at various counties would prefer. Um, some districts are starting to talk about um, getting back in person. Some are only doing it if they can meet outside and at a at a distance. So um, it's really all over the map right now. Um, so I just wanted to go over that. Um, and then if anybody has questions on anything else on my report, I'm certainly happy to to answer them. Um, and then if nobody does, um, I I just wanted to throw something or, you know, after I'm done talking, you, we can circle back to the report. But um, I didn't mute myself or I didn't unmute myself in time when you were talking about the um, the MS4 activities with the illicit, illicit discharges. And it just reminded me, and this is just food for thought, I mean, you're already doing so much with it, but years ago, um, and Brian Vedino actually may have worked with Krista, um, and I don't recall her last name, in um, Montgomery County. They actually did, um, at the King of Prussia Plaza, a, um, a kind of a public, a workshop for the public, mostly focusing on restaurants in terms of... Um, dumping grease in the inlets and um, and things like that. Just what restaurants could and and really legally should be doing um, to to not have because a lot of those inlets, especially at the mall, um, I, I you know they go they don't go to a detention basin even they just go right to a stream that's that's was was um, paved over piped you know, in the mall, under the mall. So um, whatever the, the restaurants, for example, at the mall are are washing or dumping down the inlets, they, they do go right into the stream. So that was an informative um, workshop that they did. And they held it right in the mall. They got permission to. So I just wanted to um, throw that out at you because you're already doing so much. And that just is something to put a bug in your ear that if you were interested in doing anything like that, I'd imagine Montgomery County, because I know Krista Scherer, I cannot remember how to pronounce her last name, um, but she kind of headed that up and she probably has the boilerplate of what they did. Um, so you wouldn't have to in reinvent the wheel, but that was, and it was quite successful. I don't know how many people showed up, but the people that did show up were very receptive. And, um, I think even the mall owners or management, um, took some level of interest. So anyway, I was just throwing that out there that there's that, um, um, opportunity. So anyway. That's all I had. It just occurred to me while you were talking about illicit discharges. <laughs> so that may, that's be all. that may be something that we can plan for in the future. I don't think any of those kinds of uh, public gathering places are very busy right now. Exactly. No, this is so like it gives us time to get our ducks in a row if we do <laughs> want to do that. Um, yes, and I wasn't trying to give you more work. That's right. <laughs> we, we like to load them up with work. Anyway. Good job. But I think that, it's a good idea to do more. Do we, is that a you know one of the more um, important uh, illicit discharges that we have here in Delco? Do we do we have a sense for what some of the biggest problems are? Yeah, the facilities that we have, we would probably have. I don't know that they even make the food at Fair Acres anymore. I think they bring it in. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the prison or juvenile detention center, but. I, I, I don't, we don't have restaurants on any of the county facilities other than the one in the courthouse. So, um, and I guess emergency services has one down there in, in Folkroft, I think of that, or there's a cafe or something. But it's not, that, it's more of a municipal thing with all the restaurants, car washes, and businesses they have. Our target audience for our county MS4 are county facilities. So it's a little different focus that we have. Right. Our food port. But we've worked with uh, Darby Creek Valley and um, CRC on those type of illicit discharges as part of their programs. When they have given presentations, we presented on the ENS. So we have done a lot of that in cooperation with them as well. Well, it seems a good time to gear up to approach these things again so that once people start repopulating, as it were. 
Yeah. And Krista Shearer now she is uh she's with Aqua now. So she's the uh, yeah. one of the inspectors with Aqua on the Green Lane area mainly. And Craig Marlton is the one that handles the Springton Reservoir. Well, thanks for that, Linda. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh-huh. Next up will be Ed. Oh, Oh yes. Cheryl, I had to. I, Cheryl, I had to leave. Is that okay? I'm, I'm, she's right. Yeah. I can tell it's right. Are you telling okay. us you're back? No. Yeah, I lost you then. Now I got to go. I'm sorry. Alrighty. I, I, yeah. Okay. So oh, yeah. There's a big uh, vote coming up, so I think you're good. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thanks. I think that's right. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Okay, next up is Ed with his report. Yeah, just on a few items I'd like to highlight on the report. The first was on this issue of uh, illicit discharges in uh, stormwater and MS4. Uh, the four counties got together through um, the RCD that we cooperate together on a routine basis. And Jessica Buck was uh, the uh, facilitator for this w with us. And um, we did a homeowners association workshop on how to maintain and to operate your post-construction stormwater uh, uh, facilities on your um, homeowners association properties. And uh, it was well received. We had 170 people register Ooh. for the webinar. And uh, I thought it was quite good that um, 166 people stayed to the end. So <laughs> that was impressive for a two hour uh, session. And uh, we did do a uh, poll and uh, we hit the target audience. I think 34 uh, percent uh, were people that uh, ran homeowners associations or on the board, I should say. And then the uh, another large percentage, I think 40 some percent were from the as Ray and Wayne had uh, recommended, were from uh, building maintenance um, um, associations that run these and uh, do the operation and maintenance for homeowners association. So not only did we hit our target audience, we had a very well received uh, crowd and um, we had a lawyer, a engineer, and uh, someone from the conservation district give presentations. So we covered the whole gamut of issues. So uh, webinar worked and it went flawless. And I was very impressed with that. <laughs> we didn't have a problem. And once again, we're getting more information out there, which is good. Yep. So that's one issue I had. Uh, the other issue, we did have a uh, an upgrade on the conference call on the spotted lantern fly, and unfortunately, they're not going to seem to be giving us any more revenue this year or grant money to do any control efforts. Uh, they may be able to help us with more um, uh, circle traps and whatnot. Uh, we did th think about this in, in advance, so we do have a uh, a bunch of uh, circle traps that we collected last year from the program, and uh, Karen has reached out already to. Um, some of our friends groups and asking for assistance to help do some um, placement of these circle traps and, and on our county parks. We have a bunch of targeted areas that we have to start working on. And uh, you've had some, um, Karen, would you want to report on how, how that's going? Or are you going to report on yeah. your report? When you Yeah, have I can talk about that okay. report. Okay, uh, the other thing I had was um, we met with Chris Smith and Anna Damaro, we are reviewing the villages of Sprawl Road. And this is at the Don Guanella School, or used to be Don Guanella School, or the Archdiocese of Philadelphia property, where there's a, a lot of concern about that. Um, they the, really, the erosion control plan the engineer submitting was giving us a problem. So we had a meeting to go over how we could, uh, how they could even come in close to being in compliance. And uh, we are going to be scheduling a, a follow-up meeting with the engineer, and uh, hopefully that uh, to try to resolve some of those issues. Uh, we did also did have a big um, PAC meeting with the regional office on the Delcora watershed uh, wa wastewater treat treatment tunnel, the one that goes from Darby all the way down to the treatment plant, 11 foot in diameter. That was a very interesting meeting um, as well on how that's going to be done. Uh, so there. Still in the early stages of that, but it's moving forward. Uh, 322 was another project, the section 103, which is the part that we haven't seen before. It came in for administrative review, and uh, uh, Michelle had noticed that there was contamination on site. So we had a meeting with PennDOT, and they're going to withdraw their general permit application and 
they will now be applying for an individual NPDES permit uh, application to deal with the uh, seven or so, I think it was, uh, contamination sites, and also they will uh, trigger the uh, post-construction stormwater review by the regional office as well, which is, I think will be very beneficial. That's all I have. Alrighty. So the, this village of Sproul, villages of Sproul Road seems to be problematic, right? Uh, there's a, there is a, um, a group that is fighting that. We also have another group we've had. Uh, we didn't get a right to know request, but we had several requests for information on the PICO is putting in a uh, gas pipeline from West Conchahawken uh, down to um, Sprawl Road across from the Lawrence Park Shopping Center. And they want to do like a, some type of meter station, I think it's called, or a pump station on an old gas station next to Freddy's. And uh, there is some a group called Marple Safe that is opposed to that. And uh, we've gotten several requests for information on that. I've sent them what I had. And I've let DEP know since it is an individual permit because it started in Montgomery County on some contaminated sites. Uh, so they, they are, are reviewing it as well. Lots of fun in Marple. <laughs> yeah, it always is. I don't know. All righty. Well, thanks, Ed. You'll keep us abreast of these events, right? Yes. All righty. Next up is Michelle. All right. Um, so I just wanted to highlight, um, I guess, March for the science fair, the Delaware County Science Fair was held remotely this year. So Connor and I were able to judge the projects um, on an online database, which was um, I thought was very nice. It gave us the time that we needed to take a look at each of the projects and we conducted um, student interviews via um, a Zoom type format. So um, although it was different this year, it worked really well. <laughs> um, so we did that and then um, I just wanted to let you know for the poster contest, um, the library system, the county's library system was very helpful in getting the information out to each of the libraries. Um, I saw some individual libraries shared it on their Facebook page within the day of when it was sent over and they'll be posting um, the flyer for it outside of the library pickup areas. Um, and just to let you know, I sent the blast email out to teachers. Um, I did not do that until today. I figured I'd wait till they returned from spring break so it didn't get lost beforehand. And they still have about seven weeks. And I um, already heard from a few teachers just within a few hours. So, right. so that was good. Um, and I guess, yeah, just the only other thing to highlight um, was just archiving of our files. So we did purge a lot of material and kept what we needed um, that we will eventually send to the Southeast Regional Office once I guess operations are normal. Um, so we are working on trying to get files out, especially since we definitely need as much space as we can right now. <laughs> um, other than that, um, yeah, just a few meetings to follow up on projects that have already been submitted or under construction. Um, a bunch of different types of permitting um, in all different stages. And um, we had one site that was referred to DEP for enforcement um, that was built without any uh, approved plans and permit. Um, they only had a permit for one lot and went ahead and built the other 11 or 12. So, um, so we have a few things in DEP's um, I guess Q right now for enforcement. And that's all I have to highlight unless anybody has questions. Seems like you've kept busy. That's good. Yeah, it was a March is always a long month. <laughs> long busy month. Alrighty. Well that's very good. Thanks so much, Michelle. Oh, you're welcome. I'm looking forward to the poster contest as always. Yes, <laughs> we will arrange some type of format for judging uh, to I'm be determined. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. All right, Connor. Yeah, I'm um, just kind of reiterating what Michelle was saying about the uh, 
science fair. It was, uh, I kind of liked it this year. It was nice. We had like, we could do it like, on our own time and it spread out uh, through the whole week. Uh, so that was nice. Uh, I guess they, they, they use some uh, website uh, software this year that and I guess they had to use this year since it was virtual. They worked out really well. Uh, it wasn't developed by the uh, inter, uh, Intermediate Union, but uh, it was, they were, uh, they got uh, into it and then signed us all into it. So it worked out really well. Uh, I thought it went off, it was coordinated really well. Um, yeah, so I, it, uh, overall it was a really good experience. And uh, if it has to happen again, then I think it would be fine. Um, other than that, yeah, just uh, just some more permitting and then uh, had a complaint. So looking at that and uh, yeah, that's really about it. Uh, just a few meetings here and there. Oh, it was nice. Uh, we had these uh, at the end of the month. I had these uh, uh, kind of introductory, uh, even though it's kind of funny now I'm like a year and a half in, but I had these introductory uh, webinars that were really informative. Uh, they were hosted by uh, a member of Montgomery County's uh, Conservation District, Eric Konzelman. So he's been he's been so many different avenues. So he's got a pretty good uh, background, good experience, and everything. So it was nice to hear from him and uh, he provide some good uh, pictures with uh, explanations and everything like that. So uh, I thought I benefited really well from it, and uh, I'd like to see some more of it in the future if he's gonna if they're gonna follow through with that. So yeah, that that was nice. And uh, yeah, other than that, that was. Yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying your continuing education, as it were, huh? Yeah, no, it, it was. It was really good. And it was really well done, and um, some good questions asked and everything. So yeah, I thought it was great. Good, good. I'm glad you liked it. There yeah. we go. Then you'll go to the next one. Oh boy. All right. Thank you. Right. Well, thanks, Connor. Yeah, no problem. Next up is Karen. Yeah. Going off what Ed was talking about um, for Spotted Land, uh, like he mentioned, uh, we do not have funding this year to do things like we did last year. Uh, I did reach out to the U.S. Um, person in charge of Spotted Lantern Flight and to see what their priorities are this year. Um, I have back, but my assumption is that they won't be placing as much priority on Delaware County properties as they did two years ago um, because of the increase of quarantined, about a lanternfly quarantined counties in Pennsylvania. Um, so our plan for this year, I reached out to several groups to request volunteers to set up new circle traps. We have 50 circle traps um, and there are five county parks where we would like to set those up. Um, so right now I have a couple volunteers to help me with that. Uh, once we get all the circle traps set up, if we need more traps, which could be the case, um, then we have lots of sticky bands and we have um, bycatch protection from last year that we we'll use. Um, hopefully I see the metal signs behind you, Cheryl, in my office. I would like to distribute those as well. They're leaning up against the cabinet. They are educational spotted lanternfly signs. Um, I've had in there for some time. And I would like to get those out to municipalities. Um, and something else for spotted lanternfly. Oh, and we plan to make an instructional video um, for the circle trap. I know there are a couple circle trap videos, but hopefully uh, we can come up with some, some tips and tricks in ours, and uh, we'll have that. Up, hopefully late late spring early summer for um yeah. yeah and then the only other thing that i wanted to mention on my report um is our uh, growing greener grant for the conservation planting trailer and executed thank you cheryl and thank you ray i know he left i appreciate um you guys signing that um so we're just working through that um going to rework some of the operational procedures. I just had a meeting today with Southeast uh, Watershed Specialist to see how it was run in the past and how we can change things and move forward with that. Um, so we have that grant in December, the end of December of 2022. Uh, so we will be replacing tools and equipment 
is needed and repairing, as well as just uh, paying regular operational costs for the trailer. That's all I wanted to highlight today on my report, uh, unless there are questions. Yeah, that's excellent. Looks like you submitted a report on the volume road. Yes, um, that would have been, let me pull that up. Yep, annual or the annual report summary webinar. I, I did not submit a report for low volume roads, um, but I did Edinburgh site completion visit. Um, they finished up there, so I need to check in with them because they still need to submit their completion report. Um, and we did not, since all of our funds for that program had been committed to four projects, um, we did not have an open grant round uh, this spring. Um, so we will receive our next application hopefully in July, and then uh, the program will be open for applications uh, next fall. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? No? <clears throat> no. Alrighty. Alrighty, well, it looks like we've come to the end of this trail. And uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. No moved. Okay. <laughs> I knew I could wake you up with that, Randy. There you go. <laughs> uh -huh. And a second. Oh, wait, we can't count on oh, Elaine. You'll have to... Oh, wait. No, sorry. Okay, good. All in favor, I'm sure. Hi. Thank, you. Hi. Thank you very much for attending today, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing you all in person still. <laughs> and but, great job on being in 100% uh, uh, attendance today. That's uh, excellent. That's yes, indeed. Very good. Showing that uh, the world is loosening up a little, right? Thank you. Uh, at least I hope so. Yeah. So have a nice. Morning. All right. See you next month. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye. See you. See ya. Bye-bye. The next meeting is May 4th. Yes. <laughs> next. Bye, everybody. Nice to meet you, Ari. Bye.